Over these past few months, it has been incredibly easy to be doomer when it comes to graphics cards news. GPUs just aren't available, their prices are through the roof, and let's not forget that both companies, their last couple graphics card releases, they've actually kind of sucked. We're looking at you, 6500 XT, but fear not, loyal viewers. Today, I wanted to kind of shine a ray of hope and what hopefully is going to lead towards a revolution when it comes to gaming. And what's going to lead the revolution, my friends? The APU. Hey guys, Turk here, hope you're having a good one. Now, I don't wanna to be too dramatic, but I've been loving APUs for quite some time. I reviewed the Kaveri launch over at Tom's Hardware, and we've done a lot of content here with our 5700G when it comes to gaming and desktop usage, but a couple weeks ago, we covered the AMD CES press event where they introduced uh, the new uh, X3D chip as well as the 6400 XT, but the biggest takeaway from that event was the announcement of the Rembrandt APU, also known as the Ryzen 6000 series. And today I really wanted to focus on what kind of performance we should be expecting from these APUs. Because during the press event, they gave us a lot of information, but a lot of that information can be kind of misleading. So I wanna kinda of take it apart and break it down and kinda of come with some performance expectations we should expect from the lowly 15 watt processor all the way up to the 45 watt mobile juggernaut of the 6900HX, I think. So let's get to it. So what we know at this point is that AMD is being very aggressive with their mobile lineup, and they've got a broad range of SKUs ranging from their six compute unit 15 watt variant all the way up to their over 45 watt 12 compute variant that clocks in at a spicy 2.4 gigahertz, which if you're familiar with the APUs AMD currently has, we haven't seen that many compute units in a long time, and we sure as heck haven't seen those types of frequencies outside of their dedicated graphics cards. And to couple that, AMD has teamed up with some pretty prominent manufacturers, and a lot of these designs are going to start rolling out starting in February. So we're only two to three weeks away from getting our hands on these cool units. But AMD didn't stop there, guys. They also gave us some performance previews of just how powerful their 28 watt unit was gonna be compared to the older 15 watt ultralight variant. Now, I do have some issues with how they kind of marketed it, but they do have plenty of different uh, games that they compared it against. But they also looked at some of the competitors like Intel's newest Tiger Lake, graphic solution, as well as one of NVIDIA's more mainstream solutions. So there were a lot of performance claims in that press event. And today I kind of want to dive a little bit deeper into those numbers and kind of put the Rembrandt APUs into a broader perspective when it comes to the entire graphics solution. Because if you're trying to get your hands on a lower end graphics card, maybe some of these APUs can tide you off until your next upgrade. But with all these performance claims, what do they even mean? Well, let's start off with the two times performance improvement. Now the 6800U clocking in at 28 watts is being compared to the 5800U at 15 watts. To me, that's kind of an unfair comparison, but let's go ahead and roll with it. Now, if we go to the end of the chart deck and look at some of their testing notes, that claim is being used with TimeSpy. It's a very popular benchmarking tool that kind of gives you a broad, you know, general sense of just how powerful a graphics card is going to be. But what they didn't show us in their charts, and they actually removed it before the press event, was that the 6800U at 15 watts is going to be at least 1.8 times as fast as that older 15 watt variant. Again, that's using TimeSpy, so we've got at least a starting point to do some of our analysis. Now I did do a bit of digging and I found a pretty reliable source for some time spy scores. Now I'll post a link down in the description, but an Ultrabook reviewer managed to test the 5800U at both 15 watts and 20 watts. And what they got was about a 1021 score for time spy at 15 watts and about 1130 when it comes to the 20 watts. Now, when we actually go and perform that math on those time spy scores, it's gonna give us kind of a better feeling of just how how powerful these are going to be. Now here on the left, we've got the GTX 1030, quite arguably the worst graphics card that I have my hands on. And to the right of that, we've got all of our favorite 5000 series APUs from AMD. Now the 5800U at 15 watts, that is from the Ultrabook review, as well as the 20 watt score, but the 5800H and 5700G data is collected from my own testing. 
Now that 5700G overclock score is coming from a 2.4 gigahertz overclock on the graphics core. So this is probably as fast as this old architecture is gonna go. Now to the right, I also have my hands on the GTX 1050, which manages to score right at about 1843, which is quite impressive for you know, a two gigabyte card. Now what we should expect from the 6800U at 15 watts is right at 1850 points, which to be quite honest, is smack dab between the GTX 1050 and the RX 560. Now going forward, the 28 watt variant should score right around 2000 points, which weirdly enough is just a little bit below the old 7970 HD. Now, this is a very old graphics card, and so is the GTX 780 here, and I wanted to highlight these graphics cards because Time Spy says they're going to be this good. I actually tested the 7970, but we shouldn't be expecting that kind of performance from these cards, especially in more modern games. Now, as we go further on to the right, we've got the classic GTX 1050, which is a you know, classic budget graphics card for most gamers, and the now standard GTX 1650 kind of tops the chart as well as the RX 470. Now that we have a good understanding of just how well these APUs are going to behave in a more broader sense in the industry, it's time to narrow down into specific gaming performance. Now, AMD did provide us a good handful of performance numbers from uh, some pretty modern games. We've We've got Far Cry 6, we've got Deadloop, also have Call of Duty Vanguard, a very popular game, as well as Godfall, which we've seen a lot of times from AMD's chart decks. Unfortunately, these FPS numbers do come baked in with FSR at quality mode, but luckily we have the specific number and the performance improvement, so we can do a bit of math to figure out the raw 1080p performance we should expect. Now, I don't have all the different graphics cards that we showed with our Time Spy results, but I did want to show the Godfall and Far Cry 6 results when narrowing down into the graphics cards I have at hand and kind of do a like for like comparison of 1080p as well as FSR performance. Starting off with Godfall at 1080p in the low detail setting, on the right we have the 6800U running at 28 watts. Now going all the way to the left to that GTX 1030, rocking two gigabytes in their VRAM buffer. Ooh, 10 FPS. What a what a great playing experience, right? Uh, the 5800H though, this is what I've got in my MSI Delta 15. It runs at a 45 watt spec with DDR4 3200 and it gets a respectable 23 FPS. Going up to the GTX 1050, we are unfortunately hitting a VRAM issue with the two gigabyte VRAM buffer, but at 27 FPS, it is a pretty enjoyable experience. Going up to the more well-equipped 5700G running 65 watts, we do manage to get five additional FPS compared to the laptop variant, though we are strikingly close to what the GTX 1050 hits. Now, remember that 7970 having a great time spy score? <laughs> this is why we can't usually take this metric at face value. We're only able to get 29 FPS from this old graphics card. Now, if we manage to overclock our 5700G to 2.4 gigahertz on the graphics core and the data rate up to 4600, we managed to get above 10 FPS faster than the 5800H, though we are nowhere close to what the 6800U at 28 watts is able to perform. Now let's take a look at the FSR data. Now, if you checked out my FSR versus DLSS video, you'll know that when you're at 1080p and run at FSR quality mode, you're actually forcing the game to run at an internal render resolution of 1280 by 720p. This is a very popular resolution when it comes to the handhelds like the Steam Deck or the A&Neo. So I think this is a very relevant data point and I'm going to be labeling it as 720p for the rest of these charts just so you guys can start to get familiar with how uh, the terminology and the mechanics of FSR actually work. So turning on FSR to quality mode, we only managed to get two additional FPS from the GTX 1030, but we are able to hit playable performance from our 5800H and all the other graphics cards here today. Though the performance improvement isn't all that great. Again, the GTX 1050 does struggle quite a bit thanks to its two gigabyte VRAM buffer, but the rest of the cards, they do manage to get pretty playable rates. But what's impressive here is that the 6800U rating at 28 watts is able to get above that 60 FPS threshold, which to be honest, guys, is a great thing to see from just a lowly APU. 
Now let's take a look at the Far Cry 6 results. Now, instead of going with the low detail settings, they managed to go up to medium detail settings. Now, if you want to actually compare some of these results to what uh, Hardware Unboxed did with their Far Cry benchmark, that'll help give you an even broader spectrum of just how well these new APUs will perform at that setting. Now, 1080p medium, again, the GTX 1030, it's really just there just to have some green on the chart, but that 7970 HD with three gigabytes of VRAM buffer, whew, 12 FPS, not a good time for that old dinosaur. But going into the 5800H and the 5700G, you can see that the additional wattage from the desktop variant isn't that much beneficial compared to the mobile variant. In fact, if we overclock the 5700G even further, we only managed to get an additional 5 FPS. But what's interesting here is the GTX 1050, even though it has the reduced VRAM buffer size, it is able to get above 30 FPS, which might be playable for some people. Now the 6800U at 28 watts does manage to get right at 39 FPS, but what I find really impressive here is just the excellent scaling we see, similar to what we saw with TimeSpy. Cranking on FSR to quality mode, again running at effectively 720p, we do see some pretty sizable gains across the board. The 7970 actually gets almost playable at 27 FPS. But again, the 5800H, 5700G, and the overclocked 5700G managed to get surprisingly playable results. In fact, the overclocked 5700G manages to match the GTX 1050 by within one frame. And of course, the 6800U at 28 watts almost gets to that 60 FPS threshold. But again, this is a very impressive result from a 28 watt APU. Given the impressive results we saw from AMD's own chart deck, as well as compared to what I have my hands on in my lab, I'm actually quite impressed with just how well this APU is able to perform. But I don't think this is enough information to kind of guess how some of these other parts that are clocked faster and have access to more wattage and how those are going to be able to perform. So I went ahead and constructed a model based off of the information we've talked about today in order to see if there's a way we can kind of bridge the gap when it comes to estimating performance. <laughs> now, full disclosure, guys, this is all speculation on my part. You know, I've done some performance predictions in the past that have actually been pretty spot on, but I am using a little bit of uh, extra manipulation, to put it lightly, uh, in order to come with our figures, but it, it's at least gonna give us a good uh, starting point for any additional analysis that we go forward in the future. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking the time spy performance result that we talked about earlier in the video and comparing it against the reported T flops of the device, as well as the reported power that's being consumed by the graphic solution. Because if you look at the 5700 G, it's rated at running at 65 watts, but the graphic solution is actually rated for a lower wattage. So I went and ran all of my time spy on my individual components and was able to per calculate a T flop per watt as well as a time spy score per watt. And I went ahead and threw it into a chart. So on the bottom axis, we have teraflops per watt. Of course, higher is going to be better. And then on the left, we have time spy score per watt. Again, higher is better. Now, the blue line is going to represent all of our Vega based APUs, and it shouldn't come as a surprise that our lower wattage part manages to score the better score in both teraflops per watt as well as time spy score per watt. Now, at the 5700G, it does consume about 45 watts when running time spy on the graphics solution, so it does, in fact, score worse than all the other devices on the line. But what I like here is that the relationship, it is almost linear and it, we actually see pretty good results. Now, if we take the 6800U time spy score at 15 watts and we take the 6800U at 28 watts, we in fact get a very linear relationship. So I wanted to try and see if we could come up with some time spy scores that would help fill the gaps between the 6800HS and the 6900HS Again, you could put the 45 watt parts on this particular graph as well, but I don't feel like that's going to be as accurate and I didn't want to kind of cloud the results here. So with that in mind, we now have some time spy scores for the 2.2 gigahertz at 35 watts, as well as the 2.4 gigahertz at 35 watts. So let's throw those into our time spy chart from before and see where those line up. 
Now, I went ahead and used round numbers for these other estimations in order to give a little bit of, you know, wiggle room or margin. These could perform better, they could perform worse. Again, this most of this stuff is speculation here. But the 6800 HS at 35 watts, again, this is the 2.2 gigahertz model, that should be scoring right around 2200 points. Going to the 6900 HS right at 35 watts, we should see an impressive score of 2400 points. Again, that's the 2.4 gigahertz variant. I follow a lot of prominent leakers over on Twitter and there have been reports that with the Rembrandt APU, it should be able to get a time spy score of 2700. Now, of course, that doesn't line up with what I've just said, but I do think that that's gonna be the 6900 HX. That's the 45 watt, 2.4 gigahertz variant, or maybe even a higher wattage part. So that's gonna be coming in right at 2,700 points. Again, that's purely speculation based on a leak. So it may or may not be that in reality. Now with these estimated time spy scores, we can see that these APUs do have some pretty direct comparisons when it comes to modern graphics cards. Now for the 15 watt APU, the 6800U, I think it's gonna perform very similar to either the GTX 1050 or the RX 560. Now I would lean more towards the RX 560 due to its uh, larger VRAM buffer, but it does usually tend to perform worse than the GTX 1050. But for our use case, either of these graphics cards would be a good analog. As for the 6900 HS, I think that lines up directly with the GTX 1050 Ti. Now, unfortunately, I don't have my hands on that specific graphics card. So if y'all have access to a 1050 Ti and want to perform some of these tests we've got coming up, post those results down in the description. I would love to see them and maybe collaborate with you guys over in the community tab. So now that we have a couple of different predictions, let's see if some of these predictions line up with some of the other data that AMD provided us, because I don't just want to make a bold claim without having a little bit of uh, ammo to back it up. Earlier on in the press deck, AMD compared several different games for the 5800U versus the 28 watt variant of the 6800U. So I think this is a good chance to see if our GTX 1050 lines up with those predictions. Now, unfortunately, I don't have that 5800U in my hands, and I think we could actually simulate some of these results with our 5700G. Now, stipulations to this data. The 5700G will perform better than the 5800U. So we shouldn't be expecting the two times performance or the 1.8 times performance. And the GTX 1050, it may or may not be as good as the 28 watt parts. So there is a little bit of wiggle room here in this type of comparison, but it will at least show us that we are kind of in the ballpark. With Cyberpunk 2077, the 5700G manages to get 18 FPS, while the GTX 1050 scores an additional 5 FPS, landing at a 28% performance improvement. With Back for Blood, the 5700G scores 49 FPS, while the GTX 1050 screams ahead at 85, managing to land right at 73% performance improvement. Rainbow Six Siege unfortunately doesn't see as good of a bump, but we also don't know the scaling factor that's used in AMD's charts. For my testing, I'm using a 100% scaling factor inside of the game, but the 5700G lands at 63 FPS and the GTX 1050 goes up to 80, resulting in a 27% performance improvement. And last with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the 5700G almost is playable at 29, but the GTX 1050 goes up to 46, managing a 59% performance improvement. And in case you guys were curious, if we go to 720p at low quality settings or FSR at quality mode, we do manage to see some pretty sizable gains. And for the most part, all of these different solutions are very playable for their respective games. So if you take into account what I said earlier, that the GTX 1050 might not be as good as the 28 watt unit, and the 5700G is clearly better than the 5800U, these results kind of line up with what AMD told us in their chart deck. <laughs> but let's not stop there. Let's put the GTX 1050 against the Intel and the Nvidia solutions that AMD presented in their own chart deck. Now in my digging, I was only able to find a couple different videos that managed to have the same memory configuration as well as the same uh, GDDR6 memory that was used in the MX450, but these were both run in very comparable benchmarking loops. And I'll provide a clip of that here on the screen as we're talking about this. But I do think that these results are very comparable to what AMD was recording. 
And sure enough, I do think one of these results lines up perfectly with what we've been saying. With Watch Dogs Legion, the 5700G doesn't really bode all that well and only gets 25 FPS, but neither does the Iris Z96 EU unit. The real winner here is the NVIDIA MX450, scoring right above 36 FPS. Now, this is where I think the GTX 1050 really isn't the better comparison here because Watch Dogs Legion is a very modern game and might actually benefit from the additional bandwidth and memory interface from the RX 560. So if you've got an RX 560, run the benchmark loop at 1080p with low detail settings and let's see how it does. Now the Witcher results here I think are fascinating. The 5700G scores in at 28 FPS, which is actually pretty good, and the Intel solution scores right at 36. The NVIDIA MX450 is right up there at 48 FPS, but guys, that GTX 1050 does do a good job here of scoring right at 50 FPS. Now, I really think these results are pretty credible, especially since we're able to kind of match some of the percent performance improvement but it also does highlight some of the suspect data collection methods from AMD, especially in the Watch Dogs Legion here, where they said that the Intel solution performs better than the NVIDIA solution. So as always, we can't take AMD's word and their charts as the gospel. We have to do a little bit of extra due diligence, and I hope that this video does just that. So to net it all out to 30 seconds, I think that AMD's Rembrandt and Ryzen 6000 series APUs are going to fill a huge gap in the market when it comes to entry level and beginning computing. If you're looking for a GTX 1050 grade GPU, all of these Rembrandt APUs are gonna be able to fill that hole in the market, or if you're gonna be playing you know, Counter-Strike or other types of esports, the 28 watt AMD APU is gonna perform just as good. So we are gonna have systems with lower wattage requirements, smaller form factors, and just sexier builds overall. So guys, I'm really excited to see what these AMD APUs have in store, and I really hope that I can get my hands on some of these laptops to analyze and to compare and show you guys uh, that AMD's APUs are awesome. So I appreciate y'all sticking to the end of the video. Make sure you like it, hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe down below because February is Steam Deck month. Woo, we're almost there. So guys, I'm going to be reporting on a lot of that stuff. And if everything goes according to plan, we should have some good numbers for you to look at. So thank you, Turkforce, for stopping by. I hope you all have a great one. We'll catch you in the next one.